I turn to the right, I look on social media, where, there are people everywhere, everywhere I go. And I'm the type of person that I talk to everyone. I mean, people are just miserable. So the fact that you can say hello, hello or smile, you know, that in itself is just a conversation starter. So whoever I'm talking to, I'm going to offer the opportunity, maybe get, get the name and number, talk to them, you know, the next day. But everywhere I go, I am talking to someone or offering them the opportunity. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, congratulations. We are so excited to have such fire and such excitement because it's definitely motivating for all of us. And, you know, if you can share any more tips about what you're doing to build, we would definitely love to hear it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, the fastest way is, I mean, use your social media. We're all on social media, right? Post your excitement, you know, post, you know, what you're excited about. I mean, this is a pandemic. People are just so tired and they've given up. They have no hope. You're the only hope that they have. And if you put that in your mindset and you walk around knowing that you have the key, you have the, you know, you have what everybody else wants. I'm like, you know, I'm no, I mean, the only way to get to a yes is by going through the nose. So uh, again, it's what I've been hearing these past couple of weeks. It's a mindset. Stop talking yourself out of doing things and just go ahead and get it done. So that's my biggest thing. Get your mindset right and then just go all in. That's awesome. Do you directly message people or are you just posting on social media and they're just kind of come drawn either drawn to you? Everything. If someone even hits a like, I'm going in your inbox you liked it. Maybe you didn't know how to say something. Maybe you were driving. So I'm going to reach out because ultimately it's, I mean, you liked it for a reason. It's either going to learn to stop liking my post or I'm going <laughs> to continually go and jump in your inbox. <laughs> you know, I, like I think some people, and I know myself, I've been involved in a lot of things because I think all of us have that entrepreneurial mindset, you know, so you're getting yourself into this and that. And I've messaged many people about opportunities. So you know, there's that now there's that hesitance, I think sometimes, but you're right. You're exactly right. Everybody right now needs opportunity. They want to grow. They want to, they want to change their life. A lot of people want to change their lives. So absolutely should not be scared. Well, cool. Awesome. Evie. Thank you so much for sharing with us. That was great. We're excited to have you. You're welcome. And I'm just so blessed to be in business with you all. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so now, <laughs> Michael Tablin, are you with us? I am here, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely, we're so excited to have you today. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, I, had a, I had a few slides, if I'm not sure if you're able to give me co-host uh, capability or not, but just wanna kind of share a few things with everybody. But a very excited to be here. A, a colleague called me uh, last week and I couldn't, I couldn't get the schedule squared right away. Um, but for, last week's call was phenomenal, but I just want to care, share a few things with you guys, if, if possible. So uh, Mike, Mike, you may not be able to, you may not be able to, are you able to still do what you need to do without the slides? Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can speak to it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a visual kind of guy, but I, I mean, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can speak to it. Let me, um. For the I mean, yeah, it's an issue, <laughs> but no maybe like if you can just, you know, if people want the slides, we can put them in group me after the fact. Certainly, no, no, no problem, yeah. no problem. All right. Okay, all right, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I may not be a steamy, but I, I'm. Uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about kind of a client follow up system. Um, back in February, I had a perfect storm situation happen um, where. Clients, I had started a kind of follow up with, with a lot of my uh, clients that I had wrote business on. And I think really in, in the insurance industry, what, what tends to happen is that it can be a very transactional uh, business where you, you call a client, you book the appointment, you write the policy, you celebrate, and then the client never hears from you again. There are ways, and I've come from, from other, other companies I've been in that have been phenomenal. Uh, one of the things that I did uh, because I, I have a, a pretty large client base and people I can reach out to is I really just started tapping into uh, some of the things I had, I've had, I had learned. And there, there's a book called uh, The Referral of a Lifetime by Tim, Tim Templeton. It's called The Referral of a Lifetime by Tim Templeton. You get it on Amazon. But in that book, he talks about this whole concept of being beyond just transactional. One of the biggest ways to set yourself apart from any other insurance agent is the more touch points you can have with your client. 
Um, and, and a lot of times that's just simply, you know, when I, when I meet with a client, I have eight steps I'm going to share with you today, but it's just, just simple stuff. It's not anything really complicated, but, you know, phone call once you've submitted the app, I assume it's not a miracle, but if you submitted the app, call the client, let them know what the, the status, call them again and let them know when the, the application has been approved. Um, a lot of times I'll call them again, uh, just maybe after one month. Uh, and then once it's, once it's approved, I'll send them a thank you card. Okay. And then, then after that, I'll, I'll, I'll set up a three month, a six month uh, phone call anniversary type thing. And, and, and again, I'm not doing this myself. I have an assistant that I hire. So the first thing I did is I said, I need some help. Okay. So I hire an assistant that assists me with these kind of touch points. Uh, and then I started sending out birthday cards. Uh, I'll send out an anniversary card if they're married. And that's a big one. Most, how, many, how many agents actually do that with their clients? Most of them, again, there's no, no, normally a transactional thing. I wrote the policy and then I'm, they're done. I'll send out holiday cards and then I'll set up for an annual review. So the impact of this is that uh, if you just write a policy on a client, they never hear you again. Another agent comes in and, and claims whether true or false, they have a better policy. Guess what's most likely to happen? They're going to consider that agent. But if you have to develop a relationship beyond just writing a policy, because after all, not only have you protected that family, but it's, it's not just them that we're looking for, just like when we hire. You know, it's not the person that we hire that our focus should be on, but it's the people that they know. Same, the same thing goes with a client. When you write a policy on, if, if you're showing value, if you're adding value, not only just in writing a policy, but well beyond that, by just tough, keeping in contact with the client, they're going to get the point, well, wait a minute, this, 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 this agent is real, they, they care about me. It's not just, you know, them writing a policy and never hear from them again. I'm getting thank you cards. They're checking on my status. I got a birthday card out of nowhere. So I did this, started back in the, uh, towards November of last year with the help of an assistant. So I sent out some birthday cards, holiday cards, those kind of things, because I have the information right on the application, right? So I got to take messages back and even phone calls with clients saying, hey, Mike, I really appreciate that, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. So what happened is um, last month, I got a text message from a, from a client in Texas and, and the, her neighbor needed insurance and he was married to, uh, his wife was from Brazil. So, um, and I had sent my friend, uh, just my FFL um, uh, client business card, let him know what the new company, uh, let him know all the other things we can offer them. And so uh, guess what happened? My name came up when her, when her neighbor came over. So she sent me the, 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 the client's information. So I contacted her neighbor. Come to find out that this guy, um, uh, you know, was able to take care of his wife. Came to find out that he's about to launch a multi-million dollar software company. Is connected to who's the guy on Shark Tank um, in Texas? I forget, I forget the guy's name. Uh, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban is already. Um, in fact, he submitted a few a few days ago that Mark Cuban has already submitted venture capital for him to get this on on board. And he told me, hey, he would like me to kind of grow with the company to, to help out with just different insurance needs that they have. Again, and, and the policy rules like a $4,500 AP, he's going to pay the entire annual amount. So, I mean, that came from just simply sharing my FFL digital card with, with the client. Another client I had I wrote a policy on, uh, she got a birthday card from me last year. Uh, she reached out to me, wanted me to insure three of her relatives. And those like ethnic policies, that's about almost 6,000 in AP just because of a simple card. So my encouragement today is n number one, while we know we have the best company in the world in terms of FFL, but I, I think we need to also go beyond just being transactional, just writing a policy and put a system together. Like I said, I have eight steps that I use. And, I, and again, I, I first thing I had to do was get some help because it's impossible for me to do all this by myself. So the first thing I did is I hired an assistant. I have somebody to assist me and help me with, with those little things. Started sending those things out uh, systematically. And, and, and I'm, I'm getting returns now that I never, I expected it, but not to that, that degree. But my point is, is to encourage, we, you know, if you want to set yourself apart, from every other insurance agent, add value to your client. Add value. Touch points mean a lot because when they see that you're reaching out, they're getting that card, uh, an occasional text message, or whatever that it is, 
when that's happening, when somebody in their family comes back and wants insurance, guess who they're going to think about? Guess who they're going to call? Guess who they're going to reach out to? And that's what's happened to me. Another thing that, that I recently came across right in the uh, FFL uh, back office, familyfirstlife.com, uh, like when you go to purchase a, apparel, there is a gift card section. Uh, if you go to FFL family, familyfirstlife.com, click on apparel on the left-hand side. At the very top, you see where it says gift cards. Click on gift cards. On gift cards, there are thank you cards you can send out, happy birthday, happy anniversary, I mean, all types of cards, um, uh, seasonal cards, you name it. So that's another thing I just started doing. I just started actually sending to my clients, uh, especially the ones that, that have referred, client, referred, referred uh, relatives and, fa- and friends to me, I'll send them a, a gift card uh, just to show my appreciation. And the cool thing is it comes from Family First Life. So I'm branding uh, myself, I'm branding the company. And more importantly, in, in, in the mindset of that client, they, they, when they think about insurance, guess who they're thinking about? They're thinking about the agent that is that that's not just added value in with the policy, but the thing about the agent that continues to add value by reaching out to them through touch points. So my encouragement today, I wish you guys could see my slides, that's okay. My encouragement today is, is really just continue to add value to your clients so that when that next time comes when they have a need or they have family members or friends that need insurance, they come looking for you. And with that, Brandy, that, that concludes my, my little presentation. That's awesome. That's really good stuff. And actually, if you were on the tr- call last week and you got to hear Kristen Salice, or if you came to the training on Monday, uh, it was on Wednesday, actually, in the office, she really touched on that. Um, after what she does is she, after she the policy is approved in the home, she tells them when you get the policy call me and I'm going to come back out and we're going to go over this policy together you can make changes then and I feel like that's another really good touch point to just let Mm -hmm. the client know that you're there for them as well absolutely absolutely I think the more that they see you and the more that they trust you, the more they're willing, you know, and it kind of goes with this business too. The more that we trust FFL, the more that we trust our agent, the more we're willing to spread the word about what we do, right? Whether it becomes for the opportunity or for the business, either way, it's all about trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. And builds it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's awesome. Great stuff. Um, Does anybody have any questions for Michael? Mike, how long you've been, how long have you, um, you, you, were you doing this before Family First or at your previous company? At my previous company, I, uh, I was doing it. I just started doing it again, um, towards the, let the, towards the last quarter of last year. Okay. And it was kind of, kind of like a perfect storm that hit in February. I was like, wait, wait a minute. This is, pre- I better keep doing it. <laughs> you know, one of those right, things. Right, right, right. The mind. So it is. What happened? I got a phone call. Is it you, um, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a process, right? It takes a minute for you to even be able to get the, the response. But I think it, you know, it goes back to being consistent and doing something over and over again. Eventually, you'll get the results. Is that correct? Very, very true. And, that, and that's why, you know, sometimes you just need help. You know, just, uh, you know, just having, having assistance, somebody that can kind of help you organize your clients the birthdays, we capture a lot of information on the spreadsheet. And so for each client, you know, you, we're already doing it just by filling out the client, the client work, financial worksheet in the home. There's just some things you can just transfer to a worksheet and just, you know, as far as can you have your own CRM and just use just different touch points. You know, you, the, the birthday is important. If they're married, find out what they're, when they were married, the date they were married, just simple stuff. Um, you, everybody knows when the policy was submitted, especially with the America, we know when the policy is approved. So there's just different a- a- opportunities for us to reach back out to that client and create and build on that trust that Brandy just mentioned. Good stuff. Good stuff, Mike. Super proud of you. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Are you going to post a, uh, oh yeah, question. Slide. Okay. Are you going to have post the slides in the group me because I would love to have those. Yes, I, I would. I would do that. I'm working it right now. Hey, Mike. Yes. 
can you post a link where you say <clears throat> that you can get the um where you can get the um the thank you cards and everything? Absolutely, absolutely. We'll do. Great awesome. job. And then I just want to touch on one more thing. Uh, I did go to the training on Wednesday with Kristen. Another thing that she does as well that uh, just remind me of is um, every time she's with a client, she puts their information in her phone right then and there, takes a picture, all that stuff, but then also puts in the notes section something special, whether they just got a puppy or they just had a baby or, uh, you know, the, the granddaughter goes to Loyola. I don't know, something so, you know, that will make that connection special. So when you do send the birthday cards, you do send the Christmas cards, whatever it is, you kind of add that little note in there and it, it makes it much more special. And they, they know that you're thinking of them and you actually remember them. Awesome. That's I love that. It's a great that's idea. Like a really good um, tip from her as well. So just kind of mishing all my training together in one. So. <laughs> awesome. All right. I have one last question. I'm sorry. How much is your gift card that you give? Well, on the FFL website, they're like $25. I've seen, you know, all the way to a hundred dollars that you can, you know, so you make, you make the choice in terms of how, I think $10 too. So you make the choice in terms of what the amount will be. But the cool thing is that is it's right on the, it's right on the website. You can just select what you want. You can, and at the very bottom, you put the client's first and last name, their ad, you know, their address. And most of these are e-cards anyway. And then you just send the email to them. That's cool. I didn't Mike, that's that. on. I'm sorry. That's on the Family First Life website. Familyfirstlife.com. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah. that. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right. Good okay. stuff. Thank you so much, Michael Tablin. It was so good no to problem. have you all today. Thank you Thank so you. much for your time and your service and pouring into all of us because it, it definitely helps every single one of us. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Next up, we have. He, he's now been labeled the door knock king. <laughs> I'm forgetting what did I hear in. <laughs> did I miss that? <laughs> okay. The door knock king himself, Mr. Mike Coombs. Hello. Hey, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess uh, what I want to start with, um, if you haven't gotten these yet, these little yellow stickers, um, definitely go on the FFL uh, apparel website, and it's under... I think it's like, I don't know if it's like an accessories tab, but um, these, these will definitely make you a couple extra grand a month. Um, and what I do, you know, when I, when I have a day, um, let's say like Sunday, you know, is, is normally like a family day, I guess, on the FFL schedule. But if I have a ton of leads I couldn't get a hold of, I go ahead and, and go out and just door knock um, maybe about 20 to 30 of those doors. Um, and sure enough, you know, I'll get a call. Um, you know, later in the day, and like, hey, I got this delivery. And, you know, when they call back and be like, yeah, hi, you know, I'm, I'm a senior underwriter with the benefits office. Um, the reason why I had stopped by is because I had some uh, information to deliver to you that uh, you had requested. Um, that's what the yellow note was for. Um, you know, they'll either say, no, I didn't fill that out, or I'm not interested, or they'll say, yeah, you know, like, okay, I did fill that out. Um, and then you just proceed with the rest of your script, like you would over the phone and be like, you know, I'm going to be back out in your area Tuesday. I have this time, this time, and then set your appointment. Um, for example, um, I had a lady uh, a couple of weeks ago. I left a note on her door. She called me back. Um, her husband had just passed away within the last year. Um, I ended up getting her mortgage protected for her. I think the annual premium was like $3,200. So that's, that's just one example for the power of door knocking. You know, you can definitely put some extra money in your pocket for clients you couldn't get a hold of otherwise. Um, one thing I've been using a lot lately are the game time leads. I really like those because they have the favorite hobby on there and it really kind of decreases the chances of the client saying, oh, I don't remember filling that out because usually when I say, Hey, your favorite hobby is, I, I had a guy the other day, his favorite hobby was sleeping, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and I went and knocked on his door and of course he was a real nice guy. And I ended up sitting with him. I was like an $1,800 Eagle. So, you know, the, it's, it's just as effective, I think, over the phone. I actually tend to think door knocking is a little bit easier um, than talking to clients on the phone because um, I, I want to say that clients are not as um, as brave, I guess, to just kind of write you off. So you kind of have that more, it's more personal to be in front of the client and they already get to know you, you know, they, they see a face and they're like, oh, okay, like I've kind of met this person now. 
I feel a little bit more comfortable and you know, usually they'll end up just letting you in. I'll, when I get to the door and I door knock, I say, you know, hi, Miss Mary. Hi, my name is Mike. I, I say I'm a senior underwriter from the benefits office. That way, you know, it kind of makes me sound important. And I say, I'm just getting back to you. I have this pending request on my desk um, from you uh, regarding life insurance. And the game time leads are usually for final. Well, they are for final expense. That's pretty much the only reason why this are there. And I'll say, you know, um, if you have about 15 minutes right now, I can take care of this for you. And um, just last Wednesday, I did the exact script and I got, I sat with three people in a row, uh, right. ended up writing, I think about $5,000 total worth of premium. And um, I'm, trying, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> so where was I going with that? So basically, Yes, you you're you're gonna you're gonna make the extra you know six seven eight thousand a month just just getting that door knocking in, um, you know, and then you'll have some clients that turn you away, and you know you just got to keep rolling with it. Mike Mike File uh, and on his uh, call a couple of weeks ago had a really good uh, thing that I never thought about. He says you know you're when you flip a coin and you call heads, you know you can flip it and keep flipping it. It, it can keep landing on tails, but it's not going to land on tails forever. Eventually, you're going to land on heads. And the more you flip it, the more it's going to land on heads. So just like, kind of keep pushing forward with those door knocks, and you'll definitely get a lot of appointments out of those. Um, does anybody have any, any questions in regards to the door knocks? I, my, so I got a question. Um, uh -huh. like, so, you know, so this is what I think everybody should understand, is you're new to insurance, right? Correct. Yep, I've been doing, I'm only two months into this. Two months. Okay, so two months you've been doing it. You sound like a pro. You sound like you've been doing this forever. And then I remember when I first met you at the office. Uh-huh. It was like oh, that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah my, my <laughs> second week, I wanted to quit. I, 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 I had worked in the medical field for 16 years. I was used to my Monday through Friday nine to five job. But um, I, I tell you, after week three and four, it really started to get easier for me. Um, so, you know, just as a side note, anybody that's out there that hasn't done this before and you feel like you're struggling, just just put your nose down and keep grinding because uh, I'm now in a completely different place than I was about six weeks ago. You know, I feel much more confident about what I do. It's just a learning process. It takes time. And um, I, I mean, that's really it. And just keep grinding. Yeah, that's a, that's what I wanted people to hear is like you have not been doing this very long. You sound like you've been doing this for years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I and two, what happened, Mike, based on just from what, you know, what I saw from the beginning and then, you know, what, I, what I've seen lately from you is that you really did just, you just, you did the hard shit, right? Yep. You did the stuff that most people won't do, right? right. You were, I believe you were probably, at first you were calling old leads, am I right? Correct. And you were having some, a little bit of success, a little bit of something going on with those. Um, but I think what changed for you and from what I've seen is that you took those some of those old leads and used door knocks. And so yes. because you started doing this door knocking thing, I believe that other people are kind of catching on. And that's not, this is not our bread and butter. This is just, okay, you got time in between appointments, you know, where you have right. an open space. Then, you know, you have, there's an app called, um, you use uh, Road Warrior, right? Correct, yes. Yeah, so it's an app, guys, called Road Warrior that will put uh, the addresses in order that makes sense. Um, that, that you don't, so you're not driving from one side of town to the other side of town, back to the other side of town. If you're, you know, thinking about knocking on doors, it puts the, all the, it puts your route in the quickest, the quickest order. Um, <clears throat> but I think, you know what I'm saying? Those are the things, Mike, that people should definitely know is that it didn't start overnight. You struggled at the beginning and then you just kept going and you started just doing stuff that most people aren't doing. And because you have, you, you're having a lot of success. And now you're in a position where you can buy your own leads, right? Correct. Yeah, that was that was a big reason for my door knock is, you know, I had left my last job with the last paycheck that I had. And I wanted to try to salvage as many of those leads that I couldn't get a hold of as I could. And I, there was a lot of them. And, and you know, I, I did have a few people that I was able to sit with, call me back. So, you know, just just put in the work and I, I guarantee that you're going to have a couple people out there that have been waiting for you to, to come to their house. You know, it's just, it like, you know, everybody says it's a numbers game. You know, the more, the more door knocks you do, you know, the more likely you're going to sit with somebody now, but you know, like Kali's saying, you know, this is not, 
you know, what we want to ultimately go to. It's just kind of our in-between if we have a gap in our schedule. Um, you know, it, and it's a little bit of preference. I kind of like doing it just because for me, like I like, I like saving on my investment as much as I can. But, you know, eventually if I get to the point where I can just start, you know, I, I get enough money in my bank where I can just start buying leads every week and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's hurting my account, then I will. But I would say to at least start building your account, you know, exhaust as many leads as you can. And then when you're done, you know, then think go ahead and get your new batch of leads. But that's just my preference. It might not work for everybody, but that's what I do. No, that's good yeah. stuff. My, and then, I'm sorry, um, I'll, whoever was asking the question, I got one more question. Uh -huh. how, I know you posted on Facebook how much money you made at your job that you had before, right? What was right. it? What was your salary? What was your income? Uh, my, you annual my annual salary as an ultrasound tech was, was about seventy nine thousand a year, and just in two months at FFL, I think I issue paid twenty six thousand total. Just in two just months, in, in January and February. Yep. Wow, and that's, that's crazy. A brand new insurance agent, no experience, just putting my nose down and going to work and asking questions later. And there's plenty of awesome agents at this company that are more than willing to help you. I mean, pretty much anybody you talk to has given me a really good tip and it's helped me to better myself along the way. So anybody who's running into a struggle, you know, you can reach out to any agent. Um, I, I, that's what I love about this company is like everybody's 110% and willing to help you. There's, there's no, you know, like, oh, I can't get to that right now. They, they will even pick up their phone if they're with a the client. And I think that is so awesome. I, it just, just shows how much you know, uh, I guess workmanship, you know, everybody has with each other. And I think it's great. Anybody have anybody, any more questions for Mike? Yeah, anybody have any questions in regards to door knocking? Uh, oh, I wanted to mention this. Um, wa go watch, um, look up Paul McClain's How to Effectively Door Knock video. Um, and I'll just kind of simplify it real quick. What he says is basically when you go to the door, kind of like what I said earlier, hi, Miss Mary, my name's, you know, Mike, I'm an underwriter with the benefits office. Um, the reason why I'm stopping by, I got this inquiry here. Um, you're looking for final expense insurance. If you have about 15 minutes now, um, I can sit with you. What I don't, what I do is I just come to the door with my lead. I don't bring my bag with me because that kind of makes it already look like I'm trying to get into, like force myself into the house. And I don't want the client to feel like I'm being pushy. I just kind of say it like, like Kristen makes this uh, quote. She says, act like it's a big deal but it's not a big deal. You know, just kind of kind of drop by and be like, hey, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just stopping by real quick to fulfill this request. And, you know, either they'll say, yeah, come on in. Or, you know, if, if they say no, what you want to say is that's fine. Uh, I actually run by appointment anyways. Uh, and Paul McClain says that. So what you can say is I, I typically run by appointment, you know, tell them the next time you're going to be back in the area, see if you can set an appointment with them then. If you have a business card like I do, I have actually an appointment schedule on the back of the card. So you can just write their name, the day and the time. That way they have something to remember. And um, I really like that video. Go check out Paul McLean's How to Effectively Door Knock. And that'll really help you. I'm going post, to post, post the link and um, group me in on here as well for that video. Okay. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Hey, hey, Mike. Hi, uh, hey, Mike. This is Andre. I did have a quick question for you. Great job on the call, man. You've been killing it. Um, What's up, you Andre? Hey, what's going on, brother? So you you actually had mentioned something earlier. You were saying that you actually, you really enjoy the game time leads. I wanted to know, like, how, when you do buy your leads, I know, obviously, you said you're in the transition period, which is super understandable and really smart on your behalf to exhaust and resolve every lead. Mm -hmm. what time are right, when are you buying like if you're say you're going to dial on monday what, uh -huh. what day are you buying the actual leads um i'll if i'm dialing let's let's say i'm running tuesday um i like to buy my uh i like to try to buy my game time leads 24 hours before like on a monday morning and the reason why i do that is because they come in throughout the day um, and I pretty much dial all day. So as they're coming in, I can get them while they're fresh, you know, and the closer I can get them towards my next run day, uh, the, I feel like the better chance I have of actually booking that appointment. Like just for example, the three door knocks that I got back to back to back on Wednesday, they were, they were all um, game time leads that had come into my email within the last, I'd say 30 minutes. 
and they all just happened to be close to where I was. So I just got the lead. I went right to the house. And, um, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, like I just put this in and you're, you guys are really fast. So that was, uh, you know, if, if you can get them fresh, especially while you're out in the field, because you're not going to get them all in one day. Um, you know, they kind of trickle in over 24 hours. So I kind of like having some of those come in while I'm in the field and I'll actually take them to the person's house and, you know, the, they're, they're fresher in their minds and, you know, there's a better chance of them sitting with you right then if they still got their interest peaked, if that makes any sense. No, that makes perfect sense. Appreciate you. Thank you for the advice. Keep killing it. Yeah, man, no problem. Yeah, that was good stuff right there. I didn't think about ever ordering them that morning and let them trickle in as you're dialing. That's that's good. Yeah, I, I, I really like that, Brandy. I kind of just discovered that by accident. I was just like, oh, you know, like, this is kind of great, actually. Like, because, you know, with the CRM leads, you get them within like 10 minutes. You know, they're all dumped into your you don't have to worry about those and waiting on them, but this, the game time leads do take a little bit longer. I, I have one last question too, to add to that, Mike. Um, how many leads when you do order, what's the minimum order that you'll order at a time? Um, I usually either get 25 or 30. It kind of depends on how I feel about my budget that week. Um, but yeah, I'll get about 25 to 30 and then I'll, I'll buy, um, I'll mix them in with the one month CRM leads. I'll buy some of the new internet leads. What I really, I like the mail pro leads um, because they're actually handwritten out. Um, I, I'm not sure what the source that is used for the instant internet leads because it's kind of a generic template. I, I feel like they're a little bit harder. I mean, I don't want to discredit them. I think, I think they're any lead work. So definitely don't count those out. Buy any leads you can. Um, I, I personally like myself, anything that has the hobby on it or is handwritten out because I feel like the client, you know, might have a little better chance of remembering, you know, what they filled out. So that's usually what I use. Got it. And I just want to make sure that I clarify, you, Mike, 20, because you're talking about 20 to 25 game time leads, not because it, it matters how many, yeah, you know. Sure. Correct. Those game time leads are $23 a piece. And all you need to do is get the standard ones. They have ones with life questions, but you don't need to buy those um, because it doesn't really, I don't really feel like it increases your chances of sitting with the client. Uh, you know, I had Mike file tell me one time that he's bought, he's bought the $85 leads and he's had a client tell me he, he, they don't remember filling that out. So <laughs> um, I would just stick, you know, with the, uh, with the cheaper side for the game time and you should be fine. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that part. Like when you're talking about 20 to 25 leads, you're talking about game time leads, which are $23 a piece. Correct. Because that, that number wouldn't necessarily work with another type of lead. Yeah, right. Like the internet, you know, when you get the leads out of the CRM, they're a little bit more cost efficient. Um, and they still work just as well. So definitely, definitely get a mix of those. Don't I wouldn't buy, I mean, personally for me, I wouldn't buy all of one lead, you know, definitely mix up the mortgage protection, file expense, game time, um, and you should do fine. Anybody have any other questions? Mike, what's the most you spent on leads at one time? Um, probably uh, $1,100 for a dial session is the most I've spent so far. And the more, the more you invest, the more you're going to get back. And I'm still trying to get to that point. <laughs> I keep hesitating to invest my money, but it, you just kind of got to go in and ask questions later. So I think if you can invest, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're able to invest $2,000 every week in the leads, I think that would be really good. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to get myself to that point, but. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, say it again. I, um, I invest about $2,000 in the leads every week. About Say one, it again one, one more time. <laughs> I invest about about two grand in the leads every week. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Yep. Yep, you heard right. <laughs> but you'll get, you know, if you write one po one policy, you know, averages about. Um, I can't remember what that chart says. I think it was like a thousand dollars to sit with the client for policy. So if you sell one of those policies, you've already made your money back and then everything else is just, you know, extra for that day. So it's all cumulative, you know, it's all cumulative. So you just, just keep doing it until you build your bank account up to where you got it comfortable. And then you can really start kind of mixing more leads and some, maybe some better leads. 
Now, Mike, uh -huh. when, you're, when you're spending up to two thousand dollars a week on leads, you can call it one time, are you like say Monday, Sunday night, you're putting two grand in, or are you breaking that up? 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 I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Um, Sandra, you got to mute. Sorry, then I had a sneeze. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're saying that you're investing $2,000 up to $2,000 a week in leads. Mm -hmm. uh, are you putting all that in at one time or are you kind of breaking, like buying a little bit, seeing if you need more, you know, and it's kind of like playing it by ear, but knowing that you have to spend up to two grand. Yeah, it's that that's for both dial sessions. Like, so I, I'll, I'll use about a no more than a thousand for my first one during the week and then for Monday. And then when Thursday rolls around, I'll go ahead and purchase leads again. Um, you know, and that's just all that uh, that's all based on, you know, where everything stands financially for myself. But, you know, I, I try to keep it right in that one to two thousand dollar range. Hey, Mike. Yes. Um, great job today, by the way, and, and, and everything that you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I know that you said you're trying to, you know, get out of that that habit of that of the feeling that you get when you're invest when you have to invest money. Uh -huh. But since you have been right what would you say your average return is? Would you say that every time you've invested two grand on a or 1100 on a dial session, that your return has been greater than the money that you put in? Oh, always. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, um, I, I would say, you know, if I invest about two grand a week, I'm probably getting a return of like anywhere from six, you know, to 10 grand a week. Um, I think I just wrote, I think I wrote 10,000, for my first week of, uh, or uh, for the last week of February, I believe. Or are we, are we, are we in the second week of March? I'm so lost now. I think we're in the, uh, I think we're starting the second week of March, but yeah, my first week of March, I, I went out and wrote 10,000 and I probably invested two grand. So it, you, you definitely get your return on it. Um, just, just don't be afraid to spend that money and, you know, like just, just keep buying leads Buy buy, um, you know, 75 to hundred leads every dial session. And you'll be just fine. Uh, you always want to have a lead problem. Definitely. Say, have a lead problem. I have one more question for you. That's that's so great. So mm -hmm. I know like in the beginning, like Holly was talking about when we were watching you, we didn't really hear about Coombs. And then all of a sudden, boom, overnight, your name is like everywhere. And you're just doing, you know, you're doing so great with only being in, in the life insurance industry for two months. Can you kind of talk about what that switch was? Like, was there a conversation that you had with yourself when you went home? Or were you just tired of being sick and tired of getting the crap that you were getting? Where, where was that switch for you? Um, as far as transitioning from my last job, is that what you mean? No, transitioning from like when you came in and things weren't really happening for you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, I guess being new at this, I didn't really know how, you know, how hard I had to dig my nose down into the ground to get, you know, to where I wanted to be. But um, when you, when I felt like my first two weeks, I was like, oh, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. I was like, I just, you know what, this is ridiculous. Like I quit my last job for a week or for a reason, because this, I have every opportunity to get myself ahead here. I don't know why, you know, I'm kind of dilly dallying around. I need to, I need to put more time and more effort into this. And I need to get used to, you know, not having my Saturday, Sunday anymore, you know, to, kind of have a break to enjoy myself because you're going to get all that time on the back end you just you want to put your nose down and grind for about the next two years if you're just starting out and it's, it's all going to be you're going to get all that time back on the back end it's definitely going to be worth it you know you're not going to feel like you're struggling living paycheck to paycheck anymore I mean this this business gives you so much opportunity to make money and and bonuses and you know you just got to put in the time and you're going to do great and that, that's kind of what I had to discover is just, I, I got I had to put in more time, you know, that, that meant time away, a little bit more time away from my family. And it, it, it's, it is hard, you know, I, I love spending time, you know, with you know, my girlfriend or kids and stuff like that, but you know, I want, I'm going to get all that back on the back end. So just go to work and you're going to, and you're going to enjoy the rest of your life the way you want to. Definitely. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. Good stuff, Mike. I um as a as a dance teacher, you know, or just 
you know, you watch dancers, like really good dancers, and they make it look super, super easy, right? So I get students all the time who come into class and, and brand new dancers, right? They're walking in and they're just ready to rock and roll, be the best dancer in the world. And then we start doing class and they see all the effort and all the things that go into it. It makes it's very hard to be a great dancer, right? It's very hard to be a great insurance agent. It doesn't just happen overnight, but I know that some of like the leaders make it look very easy. Like, oh my God, like I'm, you know, and then you finally get in here and you're like, oh my God, okay, I really got to work. I really got to learn. I really got to show up to the meetings. I, there's a lot I got to do to make the money that I'm seeing that I want to do, right? It's a simple process, but at the same time, you come in thinking it's going to be super easy and then you find out like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it takes hard work and it's the same with anything whatever you've done in your life whether you're an ice skater you're a football player you know the, the great ones make it look easy but there's been so much you know blood sweat and tears behind that to get to where they are so congrats mike way to fight through it and push and not quit because hey you wouldn't be here talking to us and pouring into us today if you had quit so we really appreciate your tenacity no, i i appreciate you all you guys have kept my have a kept me adjusting my mindset so I can I, I wasn't always a positive thinker all the time but I, I'm slowly getting better each day <laughs> absolutely I mean we all come from somewhere and we all are of a, you know a culmination of our experiences and what we've been doing when absolutely. you're 40 years old that's a lot to to rework <laughs> you change your brain and everything so great yep. job great job all right, uh, Colleen and Corinne, is that it for today? Yes, um, so Mike, any last words before, because I know we have a few more minutes left. Any last words or last advice that you can give? Because I know we got a lot of people on here that are either thinking about doing FFL and they, you know, they're either studying for their license or got their license or they're just not really moving as fast as they, that, uh, as, that, as I know that they can and they know that they can. So any, advice to the new the new hires the new agents any advice that you can give to a new person oh let's see to a new person um biggest thing i would say especially when you're on the phones and i struggle with this from day one was um take the emotion out of it um you know if if, if you're calling somebody on the phone and they're you know they're not the clients you're, you're gonna run into miserable people just do everything you can to get off of that call as quick as you can and go to the next person so that you don't have that little uh, uh, sense of doubt in your head because the more that that happens, that more that's going to mess with your mindset and you just have to move on to the next one because you got to know that not everybody is going to is going to be like that. And there actually are people out there that, you know, do want help. So you just got to find them. I mean, that's that's really the as basic as I can put it. And um, I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to, if, if you have another minute or two, I just wanted to, I'm, I'm going to draw something real quick for everybody. Um, this is kind of, it was a, this is off a video of something that I, I watched recently and it, it kind of helped me with my mindset. Um, so we kind of go through life. We have, you know, we have certain things in life right here. So you have your, this is your breakup. You know, this is, you know, the, you know, something happened, traumatic happened in your life. Uh, you know, maybe you, you lost, you know, $10,000 here or something. These are all memories. And what you want to do with these is just delete it. These don't exist anymore. You don't have to worry about these. Um, what we're doing is we're following this. Here, let me draw it real quick. <laughs> we're following a path here. And what happens is this is the path you're on right here. And you're coming up. You run into a little event right here, which is neither positive or negative. You have to decide whether this is on your path or not. And then you simply move on to your end goal, which is up here, and then life becomes a game. So let's go. I think that's it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Peace. All right. Well, what a wonderful call. Thank you, Mike and Mike and Evie and Corinne and Kali for your time and your service and really putting this call together every Saturday. It's like church for me. It keeps me inspired. It keeps me motivated. And I hope it does for everybody else too. We do this call every Saturday at 11 o'clock. So many good speakers and talented um, people in our industry here are always invited on. So it's something you don't want to miss. You definitely want to keep coming back every week. Thank you guys very much. Go out there and kill it. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.